This game sucks. A total snooze fest? What a letdown. Worst gotcha ever? Is it bad? Will it fail? Big yikes. Was ZZZ bad? I quit. It's painfully mid. Absolute garbage. So I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of people actually don't like this game. <laughs> However, that's okay. I actually do think that a lot of the reasons why people don't like this game are actually very solid and completely fair. Starting with everyone's absolute favorite thing about this game, the TV system. But no, in all seriousness, I think that the TV system is universally disliked. I think most individuals just do not like the TV system. And I think what it is, check this out, right? In the beta, people did not like the TV system and they were vocal about it. And the devs, they love the TV system, right? And they obviously like to, you know, implement it and use it a lot. But in the beta, people didn't want it to be there, at least not as much. And they dialed it back a little bit. But knowing that people didn't want the system to be in the game and then still putting it in there, they just simply did what's called taking a risk. They said, hey, we know people don't actually like this, but we're going to just go ahead and put it in anyways. And they took that risk. And here we are. You know what I mean? So they knew that people weren't going to like the TV system that much. And they still decided to put it in there just because, like I said, they liked it themselves and they were confident in it. But obviously, as we know, most of us do not enjoy the TV system. And that's a very, very widespread thing about this game is the TV system. This mode in Hollow Zero, totally fine. Totally fine. Like, if, if this mode was in one specific corner of the game, that'd be okay. But personally, I just kind of don't like how it's in the story. You know what I mean? For it to be in the story is, it, it kind of puts this mode in your face too many times. Story, exploration, uh, Hollow Zero, and like, you know, everything you do comes back to this TV system. And it's not just the TV system as a concept, it's also the things inside of it. People cannot stand getting stun locked by like dialogue or like, you know, uh, dialogue on the side at the top right hand corner right there, or like any kind of thing that stops you from moving. It's like so infuriating. And like, honestly, like I said, as somebody who enjoys the game, it still can get on your nerves of just like, let me move. You know what I mean? Like, let me, let me get through it. And there is a fast forward button, but it's literally a fast forward button. Like it's not actually skipping through anything. So what happens is you just like, you, you go through, you go through, you go through, and you understand what they're trying to do with the story in the game, but not liking the whole concept, that can kind of ruin it for people. And especially looking at the trailers for this game, I mean, just look at any character trailer, demo, any advertisement for this game, it's always them fighting. It's always them fighting. Do you ever see this? No, you never see this screen. You always see fighting. So it's kind of like a, a false advertisement when people see the combat, 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 and then this is the first thing that they get to do when they play the game. You know what I mean? So like very much so in the beginning when it's time to grab people in and you know get them to play the game and get sucked in, if this is the first thing they see, totally understand why people do not like the TV system. So TVs, that's number one. Number two, the combat system. Now it is subjective. There are some people who do like it, some people who don't like it. But what I've seen the most of is it's either too bland, it's too easy, it's just button mashing. And I've seen a lot of Wuthering Wave players say that like Wuthering Waves is the peak or like the pinnacle of combat. So it kind of ruined it for their ZZZ experience. You know what I mean? They thought that Wuthering Waves' combat was so well done. And after playing that for a month, and then jumping to this game, they feel as if it's just not enough. You know, they feel it's not as good. So it kind of like desensitizes them to this. And it's like a breath of fresh air for them to go back to playing Weathering Waves. You know, I've seen a lot of that when it comes to the comparison aspect of this game. So people feel like the combat is either too easy or you don't have enough combos. You know what I mean? Like you can do a dodge, you can do a chain dodge, you can do your normal attacks, you can do a charge attack and you can do your little uh, E skill there. So there's just not that much variety people feel like, and that bothers people. I feel like that's just not enough for the game and it gets repetitive very quickly. And there actually is a move list, you know, much like a Street Fighter game or something like that, where they have like, you know, a combo list. Of course, it's not that intricate, but 
there are different things you can do with every single character and there are like a, a list of different combos there is an actual like whole page of like tutorial stuff as well and will that tickle your fancy will that actually intrigue you uh, it's up to you you know what i mean but once again another solid argument to why people don't like the game they feel like the combat's the main selling point and if the combat doesn't hold up well then you know like what's the point you know what i mean so like once again another solid and like fair point to why people don't like the game and number three not necessarily the story itself but more so the slow pacing of the game and even i'll agree i think the beginning was kind of a was like very slow pace not only the story itself but like the progression of the game like as you move along and the thing is you may say oh well dude like it's a gotcha game you got to give it some time and let it cook you know what i mean you got to like get through it first if you're gonna actually experience it you know like the good things about it hyoverse has this strange ability to make their games feel like they're not a gotcha game and i feel like that is a good thing to rail people in but with zzz a lot of people said it didn't grab them early on it didn't reel them in early on. It wasn't intriguing in the first couple hours. And you got to give those people a chance because at the end of the day, you may say, oh, you got you to play the game more, you know? But first impressions mean a lot nowadays. People do not have a lot of patience and they'll leave something real quick. So you got to make sure you grab people in like real quick. And I feel like the slow pacing to like the slow start to the game and the, the mixture of it being a gotcha game but feels like a triple a title the way they treat it or like it feels like you're playing a single player game what that does is it kind of has this weird this weird situation where it kind of drives you away if it doesn't drag you in immediately if you don't impress people early on they're just gonna leave and they know it's a gotcha game you know what i mean like it's, this, is, this is not like genshin like three four years ago where that was everybody's first gotcha game because they didn't even know it was a gotcha game you know i mean even i played genshin and didn't realize it was a gotcha game until the wish screen popped up i had no idea you know so they have that ability to like make a game seem like it's not a gotcha game but it is you know what i mean so trust me i know you want to give a game a chance and play it for hours and hours to really get a grasp of what's really going on and how good the game can be but you got to give those people credit people nowadays they don't have patience you know what i mean like i said before like you got to get those first impressions in you got to impress people quickly to get them to stay and i just don't think that this game did that in the very beginning I mean, he had the guy cursing and stuff, which is kind of different for a Hyoverse game. And it was funny, don't get me wrong. But like I said, you know, if people aren't interested or impressed right away, they're gonna leave. There are some minor things, like people don't like the UI system in the game. They feel like it's kind of messy. They don't know what to click on. And people don't like the fact that you play as Bell or Wise, because, you know, if people pay money for a character, they want to be able to run around with the character. You know and you can only do that when you're in combat you know what i mean so just a couple of small things as well so overall what i'm saying is when people mention things about this game and why they don't like it i think their point is fair i think like they have like a solid argument like there are certainly things about the game that you know just don't really grab people right away for them to stay and especially when you have gotcha after gotcha after gotcha after gotcha coming out you really gotta have the bar set high if you're gonna have people you know reeled in so there are things about the game that just i feel like could use some changes could use some work so the game is definitely not for everybody and if you don't like the game once again that's totally fine if you don't like the game it's your opinion and you have every right to feel that way but if you do like the game i mean hey you know we can all be here and see where it goes the community for this game will be very small and concise and kind of healthy it's not overpopulated or it doesn't have too many people in it but those are the reasons why people didn't like the game now i'm going to get into my own personal experience and why i do enjoy the game so first things first just like the vibe you know like just the vibe of the game and even before it came out you know like just all the trailers we got for those years beforehand just the silly animations and you know billy shaking his butt and his guns talking to him and you know what i mean and then when the game finally came out 
you got to see how full of life the game world was, you know? The NPCs actually look good, you know what I mean? They're not just like cardboard cutouts. And not to mention all this is happening with a uncapped frame rate. And that's such a big plus, especially because we haven't really seen this much before for these kind of titles. You actually see characters like any open world hanging out like Ellen Joe on the phone or Piper, Lucy, whoever. And as the proxy, you kind of feel like you are the main character, but not in the same sense of like the traveler or the trailblazer or something like that. You feel like you are the proxy, the guy in the chair, you know, and you kind of have this whole persona vibe with this hub world, you know, and I like that. Then there's the music. The music, it jumps from like a mixture of hip hop jazz, EDM, like classical, with like Victoria Housekeeping kind of music, and they really know how to apply it at the right moments. You know what I mean? And it's not too surprising from Hyomix. Like Hyomix usually does a really good job with the music. But even still, you can tell they went a different direction with this one. I mean, like the Gotcha song is a whole rap, you know? And they even say like, you know, lucky or not, you know, at least you tried, you know, as you're wishing and as you either lose or win. So it's a, it's a funny, a funny notion when you're you're you know in the different settings of the game there's even a part where like there's an idle animation of ambi where she actually sings the song with the background so yeah like just the i mean the edm you know with like the the ballad ball crew and like i said music is a really important part of a game to me because music is the thing that doesn't just exist in the game it also exists outside of the game if i go to work if i go here if i go for a walk i'll have the song on my phone you know what i mean and, and be listening to it then so it doesn't just it doesn't just happen in the game it also travels outside of the game as well so having good music is a, a real big plus for me and then there's the animation now this is a widespread thing that i don't think anybody's ever disagreed on the animators they put their heart soul sweat tears life savings into the animation like animation is ridiculous and it's like one of the kind of craziest animations i've seen in a long time where everything is just there's like so many frames for every little thing i mean i was going through the actual trailer for the game and just going frame by frame and you will literally miss things if you don't go frame by frame because it's like that's just how much detail is put in the animation like i don't know what made them go so berserk with that but like they really stepped it up for this game for some reason like it's just it's ridiculous and it was very evident too in the trailers but you know it translates in the game as well not just like oh the cutscenes are really well done no it's the gameplay as well like the animations for like your bang boo that's following you everywhere you go like he has idle animations they have different things that they do specifically and each each and every one is different and on top of that just the attention to detail like i mean literally like th it's those small things that intrigue me and make me want to keep seeing what they're going to do next like like you can actually see what people are doing on their phone you know what i mean and even if it's just like an, an internal loop like the fact that you can just see what people are doing on their phone it's such a small just useless thing, but they just put it in there anyways. You know what I mean? So it's just like attention to detail is just like crazy. And also I believe every single model in the game is going to be different. And it is like, you know, you know how in Star Rail or like in Genshin, you have like the little characters, the chibi characters for Genshin. And you have like the, uh, you know, average height and you have the tall characters. It's just that repeating itself over and over and over and over and over again. And they just look different, right? But in ZZZ, each and every model is actually different. Like their own, it, it's accustomed to each individual one, you know? So that's a lot more animation work that you have to do. Because whenever you release a new character, that character is not just an exoskeleton of uh, Ellen or, you know, Grace. It's an actual whole new character it's a whole new model that they're making so it's like i just appreciate them putting that extra work in because they don't have to do that but they they did now when it comes to gameplay if something feels jank and just doesn't really feel good to play i'm probably not going to stick around too long but when it's like this and it actually feels good to actually maneuver and like you know even if it may not be the most intricate thing 
if the gameplay feels good, that is gonna keep me around. And I think everyone's play style is really smooth with the exception of Ellen. I think Ellen's gameplay is smooth, but I'm not the biggest fan of the double sprint to do your like charge attack scissor thing. Cause you have to do it every single time to get your ice infusion. So that's kind of a thing where I'm just like, eh, you know, but I will say, I think she is the fastest in the game because she has that sprint mechanic. So that is cool. And the combat moves in the game, it, it's really like such a neuron activator. Like when something hits you and you do that, that, you know, chain dodge or like that, that dodge uh, counter, it really feels like you just blocked something. You know what I mean? And I think that has to go with uh, a compliment about the sound design too. Like that also goes hand in hand. Animation and sound design are just like so good that it makes you feel like, you know, boom, like you really just countered a hit. You just blocked that hit, especially when it happens over and over and over again. And you get that like one, two, three counter, you know, counter chain in a row. That's just so satisfying. And so, so. I don't know if it'll always be satisfying long-term, but I just know for now in the, the near future, that is something that I just, I'm not getting sick of. And once again, with the sound design, you know, it's like the the spinning with Piper, you know, it's like the constant spin, 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 spin. And you know, you're just getting like every hit, 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 hit. And she jumps in the air and slams, you know what I mean? So then you have like the razor with Corrin and she's just like, mm, like you just, you know, it, it has that hit lag to it. It's a very impactful feel when you're using it. You feel like you're really sawing through something with Corrin. You know, or like um, you could say Anton with the saw, like you really feel like you're drilling into something, Like they just really got that down. Then there's like the boom, wipeout, you know what I mean? Like whenever you finish a, a level, you get that wipeout screen with like the slick freeze frame, you know, and sometimes you may get some freeze frames that are a little interesting, <laughs> but yeah, it's just a cool thing to finish off on like, I just did that, you know what I mean? Like, boom, I just finished the fight. But you get the point, the game's very satisfying to play. Now, as far as difficulty and end game goes, uh, I didn't even know this was a shop. There was a shop the whole time. <laughs> I had no idea. But no, as far as like difficulty and end game goes, I can't really say too much about it because I'm, I'm level 41 right now in the game. And when it comes to like Shiyu defense, I've gotten to eight, I haven't tried nine yet, but this is only the first section. You know, like the first frontier or whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? So it's like very uh, akin to Genshin's Abyss or Star Rail's MOC mode, you know? And it's, once again, it's like the first iteration of it. So haven't even gotten to the red one, 10th frontier or whatever these two are. So I can't speak too much on Endgame because I haven't really got there yet. I mean, the game just came out a couple weeks ago, you know? Um, Hollow Zero is fun. The SU mode, this this is where I feel like the TV section is actually appropriate because it's like, you know, just that one mode. But obviously, as you play these end game modes, it gets to the point where it's like, ah, oh, shoot, like I can't really just run around with anything anymore. I got to actually, you know, start really building out my characters and having good substats on my disc drives and whatnot. And man, the weekly bosses, too. Let me tell you, the... I want to say like the big like Bella Bog one. Yeah, this guy actually gives me trouble, like legit, you know? And like I said, I hope it doesn't get to a point where I'm just like almighty powerful and everything is just like, just dumb easy. That could very well happen, you know? But so far right now, this guy actually gives me trouble. Like I've died a couple of times. Like my whole team wiped out just trying to take this guy out because the fight just takes so long with my damage and you know what I mean? Like, it's I, I do see that spike in difficulty where it's like, hey, you know, idiot, make sure you build your characters. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's that time, you know? So I think 40 is where you start to really see like, okay, now it's time to start doing your, your you know, disc drives and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, so far there's a lot to offer in the end game mode. There's a lot of different modes to play. And you talk to Ray and she has like a bunch of rewards and badges and, and uh, things to get. So, like I said, I can't say too much about the end game mode as a review. I still, obviously, I'm not there there yet. But it's been fun so far with what I've done. And I can see Shiyu defense is like, I'm like right there. I'm barely clearing it even now. So I'm having fun with it, but I'll get back to you on this one when I'm actually there. And I also realized there's a lot of content in this game for version 1.0, you know? And they do lock things at internet levels. So that's you know, not gonna be all in your face at once, you know, it's, it's slow paced, but 
there's just a lot of things to do. There's agent missions, like story missions, the actual main campaign, which I'm still not even finished with yet. Commissions, side commissions, city commissions, the arcade mode. Like there's a good amount of things, you know, characters, W engines. There's a good lot of stuff in 1.0 for like a game's launch. And lastly, I do want to mention a lot of the people that I mentioned earlier who didn't like the game or a lot of people in general who didn't like the game. A lot of them actually kind of lightened up to it. Kind of had a change of heart to it. You know, I've seen people say like, I was wrong about Zenless Zone Zero or like, hey, it's actually pretty good, you know? I've seen some people like have more extensive reviews on it after already having one. Like, is it really that bad, you know? Or, hey, I criticized it, but you know, calm down guys. Like, I don't hate the game, you know? Like, so I've seen a lot of stuff like that where, you know, people have kind of gave it a, a second chance and kind of kept on playing to see where it went. And now they actually enjoy it more than they did before. So, so at least a handful of people have changed their mind about the game and that's good to see. So once again, it's not like you're wrong for not liking it, but it's just cool to see people have such a strong opinion on it to begin with. And then they kind of picked it back up and it's like, yeah, you know what? This ain't too bad after all. I mean, I've even seen videos of people saying like they're dropping Wuthering Ways for Triple Z. You know, I've seen like a couple of videos like that actually. I was like very shocked at that because it seems like Wuthering Waves is like on this pedestal, you know what I mean? So it was very shocking to see that. And for me personally, like, like I said, it's about those little things and it's about optimization and all the things about your game that make me interested in it, you know what I mean? So something like Wuthering Waves was just a little too buggy and it just crashed every time for me. I don't know if my PC just can't handle it, but it's just so many bugs. I couldn't actually play the game. So I just, I had to just go, you know, but and then coming back to this is like, it's like, whoa, you know what I mean? Like the unlimited frame rate and stuff like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Like I'm having fun with the game. I want to see where it's going to go in the future and you know, see what it has to offer. If you made it this far in the video, you are a trooper. I don't know how you listen to me yet for this long, but that'll be all for me. And I will catch you guys in the next one.